What's up, guys? Thank you for tuning in to the Uncommon Mindset Podcast. Today, I'm joined by a very, very special guest. Today, I'm joined by Roberto Jimenez. I'll just give you a brief background on who Roberto is. Roberto is a Brazilian jiu-jitsu black belt under Raul Jimenez, Roberto's father, widely recognized as one of the most exciting athletes of his generation, a reputation Roberto earned whilst competing in the International Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu Federation circuit. Jimenez conquered world jiu-jitsu titles as a blue belt, purple and brown belt, always displaying a submission oriented grappling style with which he captivated fans from all around the world. This young prodigy has beat the likes of Keenan Cornelius, both the Rutolo brothers, Nick Rodriguez and the list goes on. What an absolute uncommon individual and such an honour to be joined by you today. Hey, uh, man, I appreciate it. Happy to be here, happy to be, you know, just happy to be alive and doing what I love. Of course. No, thank you so much. Um, I got to start off by asking, um, how does it feel after that incredible performance at uh, Polaris Squads? You know, your whole team done an incredible job, especially yourself. Uh, how do you feel? Yeah, I feel, it feels good, man. Like, it was five fights. It was a good performance. I do wish I could have finished the all the fights, but I feel like I had some somewhat of a, like, you know, uh, dominant performance. And overall, like, team, the Team USA for this time was, like, very on uh, on point, you know, like, pretty dominant. Seven to zero is a, is a good score. And I believe it was mainly because everyone was, you know, looking to have a good time, like, on and off uh the competition set so just you know three days in and out with a five hour difference for like some i don't know maybe some some people had maybe like longer time difference but that's the time difference that i had and i know that was like interesting to like maneuver the three days to to stay you know as 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 awake as possible during the day and timing it for for the day of the the fight but overall it was a a very fun experience seeing the format in like or being in a, in a in the, performing in a format where it's uh it's like a team setting and you know you, you don't know when you're gonna go like you, you kind of have a sense of, of you have a strategy right because you start looking at the points and like the scoring the first because of the weight classes and the uh, go, uh, the like the weights the people with weight difference fighting each other like lower weight getting two points on the higher weights which was interesting but overall it was uh just kind of like go with the flow and and enjoy the, the next couple like, three days yeah yeah it was it was incredible to watch it live because i was in the i was in the crowd and um just every match, it was just like electrifying. The crowd was incredible as well. And uh, it was amazing. Um, I saw a video of you before you actually came out to the stage and you're doing this thing where you're like breathing really heavily. Is that like a yeah. thing that you do before you compete? Does that like calm your nerves down? What's that whole process for? It's kind of a warm up overall. Like it puts me, it, it, uh, it's like a form of meditation. I, you could say, because breathing exercises, really help to feel um to feel like your whole body so like you know you, you feel conscious of like like the blood running through your body you can feel like the the flow of like you know when you touch the a, a river or the ocean you can feel the stream of the water like going back and forth so i mean we're, we're built up of like I'm, I won't, uh, I'm not sure 100% how much, but I feel like it's a big percentage of our body is built out of water. Yeah. So what, what I feel when I do these breathing exercises is that I can like feel more in touch with my body, mm. which, I mean, logically speaking, if I'm about to fight, I want to feel as, as like, you know, as, as much control over my body so that I can perform better. Mm. And, uh, yeah, I I do it almost for every fight and just enough to where I can I can have like a relaxed, you know, like feel 
because it, it's something that does like calm uh it, it does calm me down but it's not something that i i do like uh, <laughs> like <laughs> the cat yeah nina let me know it's chilling uh, but no it helps a lot it's just something that you uh if i, I would recommend people to experiment with it before doing it in the fight hmm. because i've done it uh like on a day to day when i'm training and i'll do like a session of of like three sets of like maybe it's like a session of right under an hour to an hour of breathing <laughs> and those really like calm me like feel like very very like uh very calm you know like um, like almost zen yeah so there has to be a balance uh especially in the moment of the fight of, of the night and when it's the night like fight night there has to be a balance of, of relaxation and like excitement like let's go i want to fight and that's like the um, that, that's the adrenaline side you know like you cannot calm it's important to have that adrenaline like flowing like 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 the um, um reimagining the the feel of a samurai when, when they had to fight or any warrior where it's you know life or death yeah because that puts into perspective the fight in a different uh you know playing field that can that's that's like the goal in my opinion to fight as realistically possible to survive to live another day that way you can just destroy <laughs> not destroy but like really really conquer the fights that's the 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 idea that's the mission is to like conquer the fight go out victorious in a in a matter that puts one in the flow to to follow up more victories yeah have you done that for a while now or is that something that you've just recently started doing like meditating and you know breath work i started uh i guess i see med like jujitsu is a form of meditation technically you know, anything that you do in, in the sense that you're focused on what you're doing and you you're not really thinking but you might feel you might be like you know like when you do jiu-jitsu, sometimes you might think of something that's like not jiu-jitsu related, but it, it connects with the, te- the the situation that you're in, in the fight or in training, right? Um, like you might, you might realize something about like patience or about strength or about your emotions. Like maybe I was about to get that submission or I was about to get that back tick, but then I, I second guessed myself or I got frustrated or I didn't believe enough. You know those things, those uh, those lessons can be transferred into like real life situations outside of jujitsu or, or or martial arts. Mm-hmm. You know, and I started doing these breathing exercises, like uh, I would say, like right in in the beginning of. Uh, I would say at the end of 2019, beginning of 2020. Hmm. And I've always like, I have a, my, the way I like to warm up is like, like move around a little bit, kind of dance and sing. Like, I, I believe, like, I'm not, a, I, <laughs> I'm obviously like, a, uh, I love music, but I don't think I'm <laughs> a good singer. <laughs> so I, I don't know if people are like, oh, this dude just be fight. But I do feel like I love I love music, and I've always liked to, to sing, even like as a child. Um, the vibration of of the music, like running through one's body, it like really warms. Personally, I can feel like it warms me up as well. Like mm-hmm. Breathing, the wind, you know, singing as well. Like the voice is also air, and. It, I want the idea is that I want to be as quick as fast as air you know like when you feel the air uh, like in a windy day like that's how I, I want to feel in the fight mm. and yeah. I feel like that helps me get into that like that mindset of like I want to be as 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 flow uh, as smooth as air and as fa- as quick as air on a storm on a stormy day you feel like the air flowing through your fingers sometimes like 
Hmm. That's that's my um, that's my my, menta- my my point of view going into fights. Hmm. I want to be as quick as possible without like um, you, you know having control of the wind of of my wind. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting you say that because it does seem you know when people watch you compete. You do. You look so. You look so calm. You look like you're flowing, and it it just all works together so perfectly. But the, it's so funny you said about the singing. Like I can imagine your opponent next to you, and you're just singing. They're like, "Oh my god!" Like this guy's about to fight, and he's singing. Like I, I'd, I'd be so scared. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, I like to I like. I like to fight. It's a, it's a good time in my yeah. opinion. Like to have a. Uh, I just want to really fight. <laughs> like I, I relate to whenever it put into words when I heard Khabib say like I want to smash people. Like I just want to like uh, you know I just want to smash people. Yeah. It kind of I feel what he says because it, the way he fights is is very technical to where like he wants to control and like ground and pound and look for the submission. If not, just ground and pound and finish the fight. Like in a mm-hmm. in a you know conquer the fight really not just just win like conquer the fight but in a, in a technical manner because you can see some people might say that he's not technical but i think he 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 like his his style of grappling for beat is like not his style because he doesn't have a it's like that's what his style is it's like not having like a specific style he does he does everything like in his own way and it works mm-hmm. but he he does it right because he knows like how, I guess he, he knows himself, you know, uh, uh, only you know yourself better than you, anyone else. Mm-hmm. So like, that that's part of martial arts, like finding a style that's not like anything else that does everything. In, in MMA, I, I would say, and the same with Jiu-Jitsu, because Jiu-Jitsu, uh, jiu-jitsu grappling is, is wrestling, it's judo, it's sambo with the leg locks, mm-hmm. and anything else that, anything else from like Muay Thai, to even boxing that can uh, relate to a jiu-jitsu, scene, a jiu-jitsu fight, mm-hmm. you know, and everything like goes into play. So um, yeah, that's how, that's my, my mission now is to like have a, a game that can, like, you can see like, oh, that was kind of, that was like, you know, uh, you can see like the boxing, you can see the Muay Thai. And I'm working on it. I feel like I've been working on bettering my wrestling and, and leg locks a lot. And I can see it in the fights. It's it's it's, uh, it's showing that I'm able to to do things in training now that I was not, you know, so sure to do in fights hmm. and performing in, like in a fight night. And now I'm just I'm not even thinking about it. Like I feel it. And that, that's how I know that the technique is, is sinking in as a, as a part of the arsenal that I'll have. Yeah. No, yeah. Watching you on squads, I was so happy because I feel like you were the one who was wrestling the most. And I love to watch wrestling. So when I, when I saw you doing it, I was like, oh, this is incredible. This is amazing. Um, but I think a great place to, to, to take this would be to take it all the way back, Roberto. Like, talk to me about your upbringing. Like, what did that look like? I know you started, was it jiu-jitsu at the age of, like, four years old? Um, so what did that whole process look like for you? And what was your upbringing like? Like, uh, as a child, man, four or five years old, starting to train. I remember jiu-jitsu was already at that age. Like I have, I have a memory where first I started training like in this, like above a house, you know, in Ecuador and Guayaquil. And it was a place where like, it was like karate, it was karate with judo, with jujitsu, like uh, kempo karate, you know? Hmm. And like, I have a memory of, of doing it and, and like being interested in it. But like, you know, like, what is this? You know, like, this is cool. And I, I liked watching like Dragon Ball Z at, at that age already, like four or five years old. Those are the cartoons I watched, like Ninja mm-hmm. Turtles, Dragon Ball Z, Naruto. So like uh, doing something at, at that age around the time that I'm like just starting to like have mobility and like of my actions and like 
you know, like as a child, like four or five years old is the age where like you want to put a kid to do something so he has better motor skills. Mm. And, and I noticed that. But what really caught my attention was seeing the, like there was a family one that, that would teach a class together. And I thought that, that, that alone I thought was dope. And then seeing them, like one of the, part of the warm up was, I don't even know, if, I probably did, I don't know if they did karate or capoeira, but they did a, like a, a very agility based martial art mm-hmm. in, in, that, in that, uh, that time frame when I was a kid. And they were doing like handstands to warm up. And that was like one of the first memories that I was like, okay, that's cool. Like if I get to do, learn to do that one day, then like, I, I want to do this, man. They're like, that's dope. Like, like I always, I always imagine my, like, like the, the coolest scenario, like as a martial artist would be being like, a, like having f- full control of, of one's body mm-hmm. and doing the dopest moves that, that are effective and like fun, like satisfying to do, you know? Yeah. Um, but that was when I was four or five years old. Fast forward a couple, just a couple of years, like maybe eight, uh, three to, to four years, like I'm nine, eight, nine, uh, eight, nine years old. And now like Jiu-Jitsu is getting big. And this was 2008, 2009. I can see like at that age that Jiu-Jitsu is getting big. Like the cat, that at one academy, that was the only academy in Ecuador. Like it became one, like one of the nicest facilities that I've seen in the world, really. Mm-hmm. And it was from, uh, from a point of view of a child, you know, and a child that at that point, when I was eight, nine years old, I had been doing it for a while and I had not like been able to do like those, 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 uh, like my, my, uh, my naive, like my mind of a child was like frustrated because I was doing it for so long, like for, you know, three, four, uh, four years and not able almost like five years like but like not able to to do like backflips and cartwheels i was like i don't like this you know like just and then my dad would just take me to the bathroom and be like hey come on you, you gotta go train motherfucker <laughs> and i'd be like okay okay and that was like the dynamic for for a while but i did did a lot of sports as a child like tennis football um basketball I like, I've always liked skating and surfing. Like I have memories as a child in Ecuador, like going to the to Montañita and like, like even seeing two sides of the world, even like at that age, you know, because a child is not really conscious until like seven years old. They're just like subconscious and taking in the information of their environment, like building up what, uh, like building up an, uh, an image of what the world looks like mm. from before really seeing the world consciously. And at that age of like between five to seven, I remember going to the, to the beach in Ecuador and, and seeing like uh, like the people that choose to to drink and party and like you know in the clubs. Because I I'd be like I don't know like real young and I'd be like in the office of one of the clubs when I was younger. And my parents were friends with a lot of like the people there, and I could see like. I could see everything. I was seeing everything like at a young age Mm -hmm. and I could see that side, which is like, you know, that's one side of the world. I guess that's a choice that everyone has, you know, everyone has a choice. That's what the beauty of life is. You have a decision to do whatever it is that you want to do truly in this life. Like no one, no one is telling you not to do something. Even if someone tells you, it's like, they're not controlling you. They're not, you gotta put a gun to my head to tell me like not to do something really. Yeah. (laughs) And, and um i remember the other side would be like uh seeing like the reggae music and and like smelling even like smelling herb like cannabis and like seeing people with dreadlocks and like the ocean and the beach and because you know in towns like those are like like from what i've heard people have uh that have been to jamaica when, when they go to montañita and echo they're like you can that's uh that's kind of like what you can see in, in that env- like a place like that you know like jamaica mm-hmm. and i've always imagined jamaica as a like misunderstood place mm-hmm. 
And that's how I see Ecuador being like a misunderstood place. Because I remember being young, like people asking me like, oh, where are you from? Um, like being new in the U.S. at nine years old, almost like at that age, yeah, nine years old. Like, where are you from? Ecuador is like, Ecuador, where is that? And, you know, because it's a small country. Yeah. I think it's like, it's either the smallest or like top three smallest country in, in, in South America. Oh. And it's got, it, it's it's that. And also the second biggest country in, in, in jiu-jitsu in South America, next only next to Brazil. And largest biodiversity in the whole continent for the size. So I feel like I love Ecuador, you know, I love Latin. I love like the whole world. Really, like getting to travel thanks to jujitsu. Like, mm-hmm. I, I feel like that was a, a blessing that in the skies to, to start martial arts as a young age and and like step by step finding a love for it that I just came naturally. Like I I didn't like I, I didn't like love it immediately, but step by step, like always doing it. Eventually, I'm like, man, this is this is a like how did I get lucky enough to do this? And like realize, okay, like this is, you know, the hours that I put into it, I can do something with this. Mm-hmm. Now I'm really loving this, this, this martial arts thing. And yeah, that's like the beginning, like just uh, being really exposed to it and, and seeing like my dad also becoming a fighter and doing MMA and uh competing as much as he can in like in a professional scene like i was yeah from super fights just uh coming to the u.s like in 2009 and seeing like him start kind of late like in his late 20s like to make a career out of it out of martial arts late 20s early 30s even like up to his late 30s early 40s and even now he's still competing um but like see yeah like see my dad uh compete a lot and, and fight and like i remember being like 10 or 11 and my and and gacho was like a, a car salesman driving an hour to go train with makaku back in the day driving an hour driving another hour to come back um running his own academy as well and i remember he like He'd even do like like side like a bouncing job, you know, like he was a bouncer at like a club, and that I remember that because he he would do that a lot throughout the years, like at the beginning in in Texas, hmm. like I'd see him come in like sometimes at two three a.m. like just getting ready to go back out to work like in a couple hours, and then training. So when I saw that those actions of like just seeing his actions, hmm. like I, I would like. It would put everything into perspective of like, you know, a step by like as the years went by, I'm like, man, you know, I, I shouldn't be giving a hard time at all because, I mean, or this is my family, you know, being young, like you have to have a, a, a like certain uh, moments in life where you, you realize like, dang, you know, a family is very important to like work together. Hmm. You know, you, you don't get to choose your family, but you got to make the best out of any situation and look at the, the positive in life. Yeah. So I started looking at like the situation that like realistic situation in which like my family's in now, like coming to a new country and like really going to like the whole, like eating the ramen cups and pop tarts for like a couple of years until there's enough money to like get out of food stamps and all this like process of moving to the U S like, it was honestly like it was it was a uh, it was character building mm. because in Ecuador it's not like we had a, like my family has a lot of money like it just enough to like you know eat good and, and live well like go to the beach on the weekend and have a you know come back and have food on the on the plate you know like yeah a pretty comfortable life like nice life and it's a different culture there too like everyone you don't have to have a lot of money and everyone has maids everyone has like a cook if not you probably have like someone that helps you like a nanny that can help you out with the kids and she'll like be happy to help out in any other way too so it's a different culture and then coming going from that to like the u.s and texas spring texas like houston area 
is uh you you become like like we didn't have anyone besides ourselves like we didn't know anyone and that br brought like our family close like really close because i i don't remember having too many memories of my parents as a child i remember being like more with my mom my 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 grandma like my grandma would not let me call her a grandma she was my mom and because i lived i lived with her pretty much like up until leaving ecuador mm -hmm. and um she raised me she raised me right man like I, i'm gonna say like a lot of the things i know of of like respecting people and being patient with things and like you know just like uh looking to to be like as 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 loving but respectful not only to to everyone but to oneself like you know like like now as an as a, as a man as an as an adult i can relate to those like lessons like little things that i probably didn't notice so much younger and even like as a teenager like i didn't notice like things that my grandma showed me just from her actions of like you know having self respect and and uh, and loving at the same time and going you know not, not just having like a, not accepting no for an answer from 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 life like if i want to do something i'm going to get it done mm -hmm. you know it, it, i'm i'm not sure it might not be like 100% you know not even like that it's just if you want to do something you you got you got to do it you know like find a way to do whatever it is you want to do. If you want to travel the world, find a way to travel the world. If you want to be the best in, in the sport or in the skill and an art form, be the best in that skill and art form. Find a way to do that. Like my grandma came from a small village where like the stories that I heard about, like from, from her time of like, you know, just the, the, the difference in roles as men and women, like mm -hmm. the machismo, like the, I'm not sure the word in, in, in English, but like machismo is like, you know, when the when the man has a hundred percent control of like the woman and like in a physical manner, like, yeah. like almost like, you know, it's I don't see it like, you know, that's not right. Hmm. It's like it's a different time too, you know. I'm talking about like in the in the forties, fifties, sixties and in in Ecuador, like in the village, not like in the in the city town, like in the village like uh that's when, when my roots are from like my grandma coming from a village like she was a farm girl like like you know she got the opportunity to do basketball and, and she represented the country throughout the whole continent and even like outside of the continent like worldwide wow. so I, and she never I, I never knew that up until she passed away but it was just her like her humility and like i I didn't know because I was young. Like I probably, probably I knew that she played basketball, but I didn't know she had played basketball on such a grand scale, mm -hmm. and where she came from. Like that, that to me became like a very, like uh, my grandma has always been mission like oriented. Like she always has some like something to do all her life when she was uh, here with us, and now I can like really I can feel those like those actions of hers, how, like, how she ended up, the life that she had and all what she had to do to, to have, like, the experience of life that she did mm -hmm. coming from where she, did, uh, she came. And, like, it, it just inspires me. Like, it, it makes, uh, ex there's no room for excuses. Like, accept everything that I do. Like, there's no room for excuses. There's, accept everything that I do and I'll just keep growing. Keep growing, keep getting better at everything. Like, you really say, say something and do it and do it in a satisfying way, in a way that, you know, I'm gonna sleep well at night tonight because I know that I did this and I did it the right way. Yeah, yeah. I think everything that you've gone through as a child to where you are at now, you've definitely taken lessons from that and you definitely use that in your matches, right? And, and it's led to where you definitely. are at the moment. You know, you're one of the best in the world, 100%, you know, that's, there's no doubt in that at all. Um, <laughs> What are you just doing now? On. <laughs> the you goal are? is to be the, the very best. The goal is to be the very best. So just just still growing, still getting there. Oh, yeah. and uh, I don't doubt that at all. I, I know that, you know, when you, 
you know you probably are right now but you know you will be as well you know you you definitely the way you're improving the way you're doing jiu-jitsu is, is incredible and it's amazing to watch that's the thing this is why i love to watch i love to watch you i love to watch the rutola brothers you know the the martinez brothers my head coach ash williams you know i love to watch you guys because you're always putting on the pressure it's not boring matches never boring matches and this goes it, it to- takes it takes artists like uh it takes artists that love the sport in a, in a different level to to like really perform in a way that they're they're putting on a show mm. like i see that I, I i respect everyone that you just mentioned mm. uh i respect these artists because of that you know like uh going out there and trying to, to simulate that feeling of a warrior of like you know life or death and in life or death sometimes you got to do like a <laughs> Who knows the adrenaline might might have you do a backflip or you know jump over like in a in a like hit a dance move in the middle of a fight because you yeah. don't know you know it's just like natural. Um, it will start that's singing. What, <laughs> or start singing, yeah, you know, like just bring bring out that like this is this is like my moment of life or death, you know, like mm. I feel like those are the moments in life that really bring the most like lessons and and connection with reality sometimes you know like reality in a sense like you know putting in perspective like how grand and how small like uh, a human life is mm. you know and like i i believe I, i'm like a strong believer that to be like to be like uh how do you say to really know someone like a, a bit better you have to a fight is not the same i will say this like a fight is not like a fight jiu jitsu is is not the same but like when you're talking about like real terms of like life and death like mm. when you've been through life and death with someone it's a different connection with that person you know that's how you build family outside of your family yeah and but i i feel like there's a way of making friends through fight moments like this like a friend doesn't like you know or respecting someone in a different manner mm-hmm. that's a better that's the best way to to express this feeling that i have like respecting someone in a different level like you know having a new respect for someone is uh is only the only way to have that, I believe, is like to either fight or have been through a fight with them. Yeah. And uh, those those are like the the some of the, the dopest moments in, in jiu-jitsu too. So like to find people like through through the world or through time, you know, through the journey of of being a, a fighter, um, meeting people that you know are are you know on this um, on a similar like frequency of of just wanting to to be better and growing and you know being a, a just wanting to be a good like a better version than i was yesterday hmm. like that's 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 one of the cool things to see like when you see that and and you can feel like this feeling of uh how do you say like you know every, like seeing other people like work towards bettering themselves every day hmm. i feel like that's you know, that's like one of the basic things in, in life you know like i just want to be better than i was yesterday do you, and, and to feel that it's, it's really cool like in a, in a performance where like it would be like a super fight or uh like this t- a, a team event yeah. or in a regular tournament like seeing that always brings like a, a feeling of joy that still lingers with me and a lot, like it motivates to inspires me to like keep training harder it's like mm-hmm. you know to do that for others like yeah i do it for myself and i know like when i see others that i've seen like grow up with or have like have been like there before i, I was here like competing now like that's really like man it's it's good to see people like always becoming better and like you know uh think like the whole point is to fix the mistakes of the past right 
So that's the, that's how you know you, you have something growing in, in a good way. If the mistakes of the past are being, you know, uh, the chains are being broken. You know? yeah. yeah. And, you know, I guess you see that all the time as well, because you do coaching as well, right? You coach students. So you see them trying to improve themselves constantly day in, day out. What's that? What's that feeling like for you, like being a coach? Do you think that's something that you're looking to to get into yourself as the years go on? Well, I I've been coaching since I'm a I'm a kid myself. Like since I was a teenager, like I remember teaching the kid. I'd be the only kid. Like there was not even kids or adult class. Like there was just jujitsu classes, and we have several jujitsu classes when I was a kid. Like that's how I saw it, <laughs> because. I'd be the only one, like, like my dad would say, like, we got to be like, uh, like, uh, you know, like, uh, I don't know the name, but in English, but the guy who fixes the shoes, you know, the shoe mason yeah. or the shoe, you know, the shoe fixer, hmm. you know, he, even if there's no one there, he's fixing shoes because he's got to keep working the same, like a carpenter. You've got to keep building. Even though there's no business, I'm going to keep building. Maybe I'll be able to build something that I can sell. So that, that was the mentality, like, just keep training and have our, our, our actions, our work be what attracts people to come in here. Mm-hmm. Like, that's how everything started as to, like, be able to live out of jiu-jitsu. So mm-hmm. by the time I was, like, 13, 14, I'm already, like, leading adults or, or kids' classes. I'm like, that has to go, and there's no one that, that can cover. Like, I'm, I, I know what I'm I, – I, I feel like I know what I'm doing. And I know I can I can help somebody with with learning basic things and and even showing some good techniques that I, I myself can trust to show. And that kept escalating. Like by the time I was 15, I remember I was taking care of my sister, like my baby born, like newborn sister at 2015. She was born in 2015. Monique, shout out to my baby sister. <laughs> and I'd be taking care of her. You know, like taking her to 7 a.m. class, like in her little crib, baby born, like new newborn baby, taking her to 7 a.m. class, coming back to the house, waiting for her to wake up, feeding her, then like chilling until it was like noon class. Then I go take her with me, teach the noon class. Uh, t- like I'm 15 years old at this point, and this is my like first time doing this, but it was it was beautiful because like at 15 is really when I like stopped going to school and just like focus on jujitsu. Hmm. Like right around like 14, 15, I, like I made the decision of like, all right, you know, I can't, I don't, this is not my scene and I don't want to be here. I know what, what, what I want to do. Hmm. And my parents, so, uh, like when I showed that I was able to do that and, and like, I can, I showed my parents enough to like, you know, have like an open, like, Hey, like this is what I, I want to do. How can we work this out? So I became kind of like a, a coach and a nanny at the same time, like not a coach, but like a full-time, like uh, part of the gym and like a nanny at the same time. So my dad could do like business trips to like fights or, or seminars. Mm. And I would be able to like train all day, teach, which helps a lot. And also have a realistic point of view of like, you know, I have a, you know how to take care of a child. Yeah. And um, I, I would not trade that for anything. Cause it was, it was, it was really cool. Like getting to, to, to help raise my, my, my sister hmm. and to be at the gym, like all day, like it showed me at a young age, like responsibility and, and like, a, you know, in the scene that I would like to have one day, yeah. but just, uh, I would like to have it on my own terms for sure. Yeah. That's so powerful, though, knowing what you want at such a young age, right? Knowing that you want to do jujitsu, like that's something you're interested in. And especially having parents that support you like that as well, right? That That I is very... blessed for that opportunity, yeah. honestly. Yeah, for sure. Um, What are your goals at the moment, Roberto? Like, is is ADCC your goal? What, what, what like, long-term and short-term goals have you set yourself? Right now, I have the rest of the year planned out. So just focusing on the uh, on every mission as it comes with the time the next mission that i have is flow grappling tournament september 25th and 26th at 185 yeah and that's the main focus from now on or it's been the main focus since before this uh 
Polaris, but Polaris came in like in a short notice and it seemed like it's a quick trip and it was fun. I saw it like as a good practice, like if I can compete on these like terms of like, you know, travel, stay up, <laughs> fight, come back. I want to, I want to see how I feel. And it felt good. It was definitely, it felt good. That's how, that, that's how uh, the experience went. Like I feel good under these conditions, like, really good. And there's always room to, to fix and like to grow, but Flow Grappling Tournament 185, September 25th and 26th is next mission. After that, whatever comes will come. And I like to just, mm. you know, give it, uh, show it as it, as it, as it comes. Yeah. Um, but uh, in the grand, in the grand uh, scheme of things, like in, in the big picture, ABCC is the main mission to move on to like another like uh, because I see it like you gotta really focus on on nogi if you're gonna do submission grappling you gotta really focus on submission grappling mm. if you're gonna do kimono jujitsu you gotta really focus on the kimono jujitsu mm. if you're gonna do MMA you have to really focus on the MMA so giving time and like preparation preparation means like when to compete when to train and when to rest mm. right because i believe all those go hand in hand into into like um achieving the right uh the right state to to perform at the highest level mm. like of oneself and those performance, like I, I've seen it in the past, like when I was young, <clears throat> when I was younger and I won like worlds at 2018, I was figuring things out. Like, I guess it was a, uh, like weird to like, you know, I feel like I saw myself like as an adult already so from the point of 15. But when, when I was like, when I, that, that time period when I turned from 17 to 18, because of jiu-jitsu, it, like, it, it, it also, like, it's almost like if you're doing IBJJF, like, that's the time that you become, like, in, in an adult division. So, you become, like, a man. Mm -hmm. I was, like, I already feel like a man. Like, having, like, to get over that, like, IBJJF, like, oh, you're a man now. Like, you're, you're in an adult division. Like, get over that, like, this is, this is just an illusion. This is silly. Like, I've been training my whole life. Get over it. It's the same thing. I'm just facing... Uh, do like I was facing kids that are growing beards. I'm facing kids that have beards. You know, like that's how I see it. And that they're not kids anymore. They haven't even been kids when I was fighting them. I was just these are all like you know young men, growing men. That's how I see it now. Like I, I've already, I got past my child state. I'm uh, that's done. That's not coming back until, you know, until I'm not capable of really moving like I am now. <laughs> yeah. which would be like in 60 70 years who knows you know whenever that time comes until then um this is my opportunity to to make life what i can as a man and uh yeah that's something that that like uh i took some like experiences to like you know fight and find that flow of like of like you know this is this is time. Now it's time to 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 start to leave a, a print. You know, like put mm -hmm. my name down on this earth. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. And you you're still young as well, right? I know you're you you know you are an adult. You're twenty one years old, right? If I'm right. Twenty one. That, that's crazy, man. That's and the things you've achieved so far as well is, is incredible. You know, uh, do, do you think that you you'll go into MMA at all? <laughs> yeah no most definitely oh, yeah. i'm just going with the right with the time yeah. you know yeah. i used to i trained muay thai i loved muay thai before i loved jujitsu it was um, like seriously like like um i trained muay thai from like nine to like 15 like right before i like dove in and like like right like head on into jiu-jitsu like oh i'm doing all days now jiu-jitsu like studying jiu-jitsu all day and training all day and teaching all day mm -hmm. like 
before that, I was training jujitsu and Muay Thai and wrestling, uh, all three at, at, at the same time at one point. And also like doing conditioning and, and starting to lift weights for the first time. So it, it I realized for a moment, like, all right, I, I'm starting to like all of these art forms. I got to pick one to like really, you know, like really get good at this. And then let's see what happens from there. And it's funny how it's going all full circle and it's all helping. Like every skill is helping. Like uh, it, it's making the, the journey even more satisfying mm-hmm. is it, it's putting into perspective that it's martial arts. It's not just jujitsu. It's not wrestling. It's like, you know, it's martial arts. Mm-hmm. Like Bruce Lee said is like to express oneself, honestly, you know, truly express oneself. Honestly, like I see that, like, I want to be as well-rounded as I like the, as well-rounded as I best possibly can in jujitsu rest and grappling and striking and takedowns in, uh, my 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 mental game too which help was which has been helping with uh with meditating with uh with putting myself in in situations where i gotta like be, you know think quick and, and be on my toes on my feet hmm. and now like it's just uh it's just cool to see how how everything goes you know full circle but jujitsu has always been the the one that I felt like was the, you know, I, I knew that this is the, the, the skill that I had to have to like the sword that I have to sharpen first, you know, <laughs> then like, like, like Naruto or like Dragon Ball Z, like I, you go to learn how to do the Kamehameha first. He gets yeah. like, you know, that's the Kamehameha. That's Goku's Kamehameha. And from there he learns to do like the, the spirit bomb, mm-hmm. you know, and the spirit bomb is like, you know, going to the next level of like the Kamehameha and so on. Like he's got like that instant teleportation, you know, mm-hmm. he's, he brought instant teleportation uh, that he's got like the way he goes into like Kaioken and like Super Saiyan 4, like, you know, like I see those are like, like his monumental moments where like, you know, I'm, I'm, I've, I've sharpened this, this tool. And I know like this tool is always going to work. It's always going to be there. Now it's time to have another, a new tool. To, to keep it fun and also to keep it interesting yeah uh, the same thing with like nards i love like anime i don't watch as much as i used to but I, the memories and like the lessons that i have from watching yeah is real young like they're always in my in my in my conscious in my subconscious that's, and that's how i see it that's how i see it like like uh like naruto he goes out to train with jiraiya to, to become a sage master then he he's training with uh I believe uh, Yamato is is the name of the of uh, like the the wood the wood bending like uh, ninja. Mm-hmm. Uh, I I gotta man I feel like a little uh, a little <laughs> uh, how do you say embarrassed not knowing like all the names but he, Naruto goes with like Jiraiya I believe Yamato uh, Kakashi like learns from like every professor like different mm-hmm. styles like how to how to do the rasengan how to like go sage mode how to uh increase the rasengan to a new level and like also like meeting the the sage of the six bats like he brings a new skill and like he becomes like a, a new level like i see that like going from jujitsu like going from muay thai really because that's what i love like really liked first and it was at the same time that i stopped training muay thai is at the same time that i like was like okay okay, I like this. Like, this is really cool. Like, I like MMA. I like Muay Thai. Like, Jiu-Jitsu. Like, I, I don't like wrestling so much back then because I was like, I want to do Baron Bolos. Like, if yeah. I'm on my feet, I want to strike. And if I'm yeah. on the ground, I want to, like, do Baron Bolos. That's how I thought as, like, a 15, 14, 13-year-old. Hmm. But now I'm thinking, like, nah, if I'm on the feet, I want to I want to do every. I want to know that I can do everything. Yeah. And if I'm on the ground, I know I can do everything. If I'm in anywhere, I know I can hit any kind of position that is available in that situation, in that moment. That's the 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 main goal to like just don't think boom and then like oh just have that feeling of that was nice. <laughs> but uh, that's the goal, just to keep, to keep training until that that uh, that becomes like just natural. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, and this, that's the thing is it just takes, you know, take anything with anything great, right? It takes time. 
it takes effort it takes hard work you just got to stick at it that's the most important thing right you just got to keep going keep going keep going i guess one thing that would st- st- stop you from going would be injuries right have you ever I been believe in, i truly don't believe in injuries you don't I, believe like in injuries. learning about bruce lee uh-huh. he had a uh, an accident where he was paralyzed from the spine Bruce Lee was paralyzed from the spine okay. and the doctors would tell him like, man, you're not going to be able to do like what you do again. And he just will not listen to that negativity. And he just kept studying about, he, he would learn about the body, like um, anatomy of the body. He was, he was reading books all day because that's all he could do. And like <laughs> day by day, you get he got back to doing movies and, and being like doing what he loved to do which was martial arts mm. so it, it, it like it like like muhammad ali said impossible is nothing impossible is nothing I love that. all it takes is the right uh lock on the mission mm. if i have a mission i know i can get that done that's what i have to do yeah no and no i agree with you because there's so many times where doctors have said to people oh, you're not, you're not going to be able to walk again. And then they go out and they compete, you know, there's, the mind is so powerful, you know, we, we as humans are so powerful in, in, in what we do. And it's definitely important to, to realize that there's people out there that have gone through worse injuries than maybe, you know, you might have gone through, but they've always, you know, they've come back. So there's a chance that you can come back, of course. That's right, man. It can always, it can always be worse. Mm. So if you're breathing, if you're moving, be thankful that's it that's it 100 no 100 no thank you so much roberto I, I gotta ask you one more question now before i let you go um For sure. who, who would you say has been your toughest opponent so far i would say the toughest fight that i've had recently really is the fight against myself I love that, that that's I that's love the that. truth that, that's the truth man like any moment that I've been in a in a fight or had to perform, hmm. I uh, it, it's always been like when I have those second thoughts, those second guessing thoughts, or or don't believe in in the action that that I'm performing. Hmm. You know, th- those are the moments where there's a, a slip or you know a miscalculation. So it's really just growing. Uh, and like growing as much externally as I am internally and having a balance of both to like, you know, that's the only way to to do something is to believe in that action and mm-hmm. believe in that thing that you are about to do or, or getting ready to do or doing in the moment. It's important to have like, you know, that premeditation of whatever it is that I'm trying to manifest. Like, you know, I have to know that, you know, take away all the fear of what it is that I want to do, take away all the doubt and focus on the possibility of the, the most positive outcome of this action situation or even quote saying that, that it is about to come out. Just really believe in it and let it fruit all natural. You know, like you don't, you don't have to force a tree to, to fruit in nature and naturally just drops its fruit and a lot, it, it's either there for the picking or you catch it, mm. you know? And that's how it is. Just stay inside. There's so much to, to grow from, from looking within. Mm. And it's important to have a balance of looking within and being aware of the outside so that, you know, like, you know, once envir- your environment builds what you think of the world Mm -hmm. and i believe like there's a you know i i feel like there's a very mixed uh culture in jujitsu like everything's kind of all over the place like the nogi scene is a little different than the gi scene and you got like the um, uh the rules like also bring a kind of like a debate in every event a little bit and really accepting like you know once you accept that jujitsu, jujitsu, and I, I want to like in wrestling, if I have the opportunity, I, this is how I see it. If I have the opportunity as a martial arts, a martial artist, this is my point of view. If I have the opportunity to be good at 
at Greco and freestyle, then I'm gonna be good. I'm gonna be the best that I can be at Greco and freestyle. And if I can be the best in the world at Greco and freestyle, then I'm gonna be the best in the world at Greco and freestyle. So I do jujitsu. If I can be the best that I can be in the gi and in submission grappling, I'm gonna be the best that I can be. If I can be the best in the world, I'm gonna be the best in the world at jujitsu, submission grappling, and kimono. Hmm. And is the the best thing to do. The best thing is to do something and, and, and go for it. Even if, if I don't, you know, it's worse to not attempt a dream than to let it just be a dream. Yeah. That's how I see it. Man, I love your mindset, man. Honestly, it's, it's incredible. This is, this, is, this is why, you know, you're so perfect to be on this podcast, the Uncommon Mindset podcast. And I really believe that you are an uncommon person. I feel so pumped to go to training tonight now. I can't wait. <laughs> yeah, yeah, today's going to be a good day. It's, right here is 9 a.m. right now in, in New York. Yeah. Fresh start to the day. It's going to be a good day today. It's going to be a good day for sure. No, thank you so much, Roberto. I really appreciate your time. Uh, what I'll do, guys, I'll leave all, all of Roberto's social media down below. Go and check him out. This guy's incredible. He's young and the future is just bright. You know, it's just such a bright one. And I can't wait to see what you do in the in the uh, Who's Number One Championships as well. It's such an incredible card. So I can't wait to watch that. It's going to be fun. I, I know it's gonna, everyone's going to enjoy that night. I know I am. For sure. No, thank you so much, Roberto. Thank you. Thank you, Murat. Have a good day. I hope everyone uh, has a great day if you're listening to this. And stay positive.